All right, here's the OP build. Uh, for stage one, your first items, you're gonna get these five items. Razor wire, med kit, gasoline, topaz brooch, uh, tricorn, or sorry, trophy hunter's tricorn. Uh, so the razor wire, if you get hit by an enemy, it'll automatically uh, retaliate uh, hitting other enemies. Oftentimes it's enough to kill stage one enemies. And in doing so, if you have a gasoline, it'll also kill other nearby enemies. Uh, so these two work phenomenally together. And if enemies are dying, you get topaz brooch, which will uh, cover your green health bar with a yellow health bar. And uh, it'll make you more tanky effectively. And it's way better early on than it is later on. So topaz brooch is a great starting item. Med kit, uh, for each time you get hit, after a short duration, you get healed. Uh, so this will help you keep, keep you healthy um, basically topped off and be able to one-shot everything without needing to use any of your abilities for the most part. Just these four items uh, at stage one. Uh, this will help you one-shot bosses and get your boss tier items. For the god tier build, um, goat hoof for mobility, green scraps so you can feed them to the uh, red scrap printer in the uh, lunar bazaar. The first one you're going to want to get is going to be the spare drone parts and the empathy cores. This will carry your run for 50 minutes as long as your balls are nearby. They will one-shot everything basically, including Mithrix, the crab, alloy worship unit, you name it. it it'll just carry you up until about the 50 minute mark where um, too many enemies start to spawn for it to be really effective. So with just these nine items, basically your build is done. But if you want to go further in the run, you can get a uh, Strides of Heresy. Best uh, utility movement item in the game, it re replaces your utility skill. Um, with Shadow Fade, makes you intangible, invisible, heals you for 25% of your health, makes you move faster, gives you free movement um, in every direction. So it'll also uh, not require you to get any Hopu Feathers. You can use this for all of your vertical momentum, or uh, vertical... Uh, height gain and combine that with a uh, head stomper gives you a thousand to ten thousand uh, percent damage uh, attack and it also negates all fall damage increases your jump height and it also uh, gets you back down to the ground faster if you get launched up too high uh, if you get 26 uh, safer spaces you'll become invincible every second um, if you do happen to die then you get dios if you do get the uh, corrupted deals, make sure you don't have a yellow, so that way you won't end up accidentally getting the um, newly hatched Zoya. Yeah, that's a hard one to remember. Which uh, the newly hatched Zoya will um, spawn void enemies um, as allies, and even if they die, you can still die to the void explosion, thus making it an F tier item that you never want to get. So avoid <laughs> avoid having yellow items when you have um, this. Uh, Pluripotent Larva. Up next is the Dagger. Um, ceremonial Dagger combined with Shaped Glass is going to help one-shot everything on the screen. Eulogy Zero will help you get more Shaped Glass faster. If you get about three, four, maybe five of these, these are going to be dropping like crazy. Um, in order to uh, activate the uh, your damage source, your uh, Ceremonial Daggers and your Shaped Glass, you're going to want to auto have automatic damage sources. So things like uh, Little Disciple, Meyer to Earn, Unstable Tesla Coil, Resonance Disc, uh, these will help you get uh, that automatic damage out, as well as Paranoid Accumulator uh, paired with the uh, Gesture of the Drowned, or you could even have the um, Forgive Me Please in place of the uh, Paranoid Accumulator. The Forgive Me Please is going to drop your uh, daggers, give you um, additional shields for your uh, topaz brooch and activate your gasoline and your will the wisp if you happen to have any and the big thing is that it activates your uh, ceremonial daggers so you could actually get less of the um, gesture of the drowned if you just go for a uh, forgive me please instead of, it'll just automatically start homing in on stuff it's great and then the daggers just naturally stay out longer. I'm, I should do some testing actually with that. But anyways, yeah. Replace uh, Prayer Accumulator with Forgive Me Please. And then after that, um, 
to become even more invincible and tangible, uh, Hard Light Afterburner and Brainstalks to get more charges of your Shadow Fade. If you get like 10 of these and you just hold shift and you wait in the teleporter and we have three focused convergences, you can just charge the uh, teleporter while you're invincible and tangible and with an infinite source of uh, damage that's activating automatically, constantly. That's the god tier build. Everything past that is obsolete, um, but you can become the big guy. It's uh, always fun to be the big guy. If you do become the big guy, you should get a transcendence so you don't have to worry about the health drain. And you're already going to have the uh, strides of heresy, so if you want to become the big guy, then go for it. It's a massive upgrade. Best character in the game. You get your chain reactions online. Um, it's worth getting all of these. Of course, these three corrupt these three. Um, these will help you get more chain reactions, and this is a uh, better version of ATG Missile. Charged Perforator, Molten Perforator, um, Deathmark. To get Deathmark online, this is probably the best order of uh, Deathmark items to get. Uh, Runolds, Chrono Bobble, Shatter Spleen, Needle Tick, Molten Perforator, uh, Ignition Tank, Hammer, Scorpion, Ice Relic. Uh, applies the same debuff as the Runolds. And the uh, Tri-Tip Dagger applies the same debuff as the uh, Shatter Spleen. So you're going to want to get Runolds and Shatter Spleen anyways, uh, so it's almost not even worth really consider getting those. Uh, for your A tier, um, typically damage is prioritized over utility, and utility is prioritized over tanking. Uh, so that's going to be reflected for the rest of the list de going downwards. Uh, for A tier, Hellfire Tincture, Kajaro, Glasses, Lost Seer Lenses, um, Laser Scope, Harvester Scythe, Predatory Instinct, um, Crowbar, and Sticky Bombs are really good A tier items for uh, doing damage. Hopu Feather and uh, Energy Drink, really good utility for uh, movement. The Transcendence just is a game changer, it makes it so you don't have to get any other uh, healing items. You don't even you don't need Med Kit, you don't need your uh, Harvester Scythe, although it's still worth getting it for the 5% crit in the event that you get a uh, Lost Seer Lenses and you want to have an uh, actual crit chance still. Uh, you can still get the uh, Shatter Spleen, Harvester Scythe, Predatory Instinct, and you can pair it with 57 Leaf Clovers to uh, essentially double your uh, crit chance while still having the infinite damage from the Lost Seer Lenses. Uh, so you can still build like really good builds from A tier items. Next, uh, Invincibility is obviously the, uh, the best option um, as opposed to actually taking damage. So Teddy Bears is right here. Um, these Opal, Power Elixir, and Watch are basically a wor worse version of a combined uh, Crowbar and Teddy Bear. And uh, Transcendence, specifically. Like, Crowbar for your, uh, for your Watch, Teddy Bear for your, uh, for your Opal, and then um, Transcendence for your Power Elixir. Specifically, these are just automatically uh, outclassed by uh, by those three items. Forgive me, please. Parent Accumulator could go here. Um, fuel Cell, obviously, so you can get more of a... Uh, forgive me, please. Ben's Ring Coat, specifically for the Void Jailer enemy, which will lock you down and uh, hold you in place while it one-shots you with the uh, Void Explosion, so you don't want to get locked down and get a Ben's Ring Coat. Uh, the Planula specifically goes really good with the Hellfire Tincture, the Repulsion Armor Plate, and <laughs> Razor Wire. You can build a Razor Wire build with it, and then of course you can get Nukahana's Opinion, Rejuvrak, and Ages to make it even better. Uh, that's like a whole nother build on its own, but it's worse than the, uh, the God Tier build, but you know, it's still effective. Uh, defensive microbots uh, automatically shoot down projectiles based on your movement speed, or sorry, attack speed. It's pretty good. Uh, if you're going to get the encrusted key, um, get it if you plan on getting more than one of the white tier um, 
purple items. So if you get saver spaces and you want, know that you want to get a needle tick, you can then get a uh, the, get the key, get another key, so that way you can get both of them uh, guaranteed. B tier, uh, these are more situational, more situational, more situational, and then uh, completely useless uh, for F tier. Uh, B tier, shipping request form, credit card, helps you get items faster. Um, old guillotine and boss bullets helps to cover uh, damage against uh, the beefier enemies in the game. Shuriken, if you need uh, that ranged damage, uh, Shuriken and Royal Capacitor are going to do the job for you. Um, sometimes there will be an enemy that's really far off of the stage, that's glitched, you can't hit them with anything, you're going to want to get a uh, roll capacitor to get yourself unsoft locked. I've had that happen to me. Um, other cases, um, more versatile, are going to be the uh, shurikens, since you're going to be hitting stuff closer to you anyways. Um, the roll capacitor is pretty nice on its own. But there's just a lot of better, uh, a lot of better options now, uh, namely the tri, trophy hunters, tricorn, prayer and accumulator, and uh, forgive me, please. Specifically, uh, the trophy hunters, tricorn, kind of outclasses the uh, real capacitor. I feel like whenever you used to get the real capacitor, you would get a build that would help you one-shot bosses with it. But now there's just a one-shot bosses item. Uh, this thing puts down a uh, random buff on the map if you stand in it. It's basically like having a free death mark, so situational you can get it. Uh, this is like a nerfed version of bands. Uh, these are uh, going to be your utility. These are all the damage uh, stuff. Utility. Uh, get this has like the highest consistency for movement speed I find. Uh, this I find is a really nice boost to movement speed. Uh, early on and then uh, same with red whip and then I feel like uh, they're more consistent and gets you more horizontal mobility than the uh, wax quail so I prefer to get these three over the wax quail but you can still get wax quail eccentric vase for getting up to mythrix as well as getting over to the uh, monolith uh, repulsion armor plate really good early on in the game titanic neural and cautious slug uh, and weeping fungus they all belong kind of in the same area here uh, this has the least restriction for healing you over time this has um, second and this has the third this you just don't have to get hit this one you have to be sprinting uh, the chrono bubble downgrade uh, it gives you a five percent chance to root an enemy instead of just a hundred percent chance to slow them you would just never want to get it if you're uh, getting your death mark online I feel uh, C, more situational, syringe if you're playing as multi, so that way you can get the uh, double rebar up and running as fast as possible. Um, the backup magazine is specifically good on loader and artificer. Uh, loader gets you around faster. Um, artificer, it's just nice to have more of her uh, damaging ability. It's freaking ridiculous. It's like a miniature prey on accumulator, basically. Uh, bustling fungus and... Uh, Monster Tooth Necklace are honestly pretty decent healing options, and these are pretty decent uh, legendary um, alternatives, but they're going to be the lowest, least useful legendaries on the list. D tier, uh, this will activate more shrines, or rather more enemies whenever you touch a shrine. Uh, Spinal Tonic gives you increased uh, damage and movement. Uh, mobility, but it also has the uh, chance of giving you an affliction, very situational, all of these are very situational items. Uh, we have the uh, best options for damage, you can upgrade this specifically with your uh, ignition tank, the uh, Molotov Cocktail, so it automatically is better than the Razor uh, Saw, and the uh, Missile Launcher, and then the uh, Drone specifically can be really good with the uh, Spare Drone part. Other than that, uh, you're basically never going to need this. Uh, this helps you get around a little bit faster. It also helps you put out a little bit of damage, but it's just not a priority. Milky Chrysalis. Uh, you have better options for mobility, namely the uh, Strides of Heresy. It doesn't tie up your equipment slot. 
Uh, Gnarled Wood Sprite gives you automatic healing compared to the uh, healing fruit, which you have to activate in order to uh, get any healing. But it also has an activation for healing, so Gnarled Wood Sprite just outbeats uh, this 9 times out of 10, my personal opinion. Uh, personal shield generator can be pretty good if you pair that with a plasma shrimp and then uh, to keep the uh, the shield online you can get a transcendence uh, which obsoletes the uh, you know freaking personal shield generator but you know you can get more teddy bears and more safer spaces in order to uh, justify having a personal shield generator rose buckler terrible for armor you have to be sprinting to use it but, you know, it, it is something. It, it happens automatically. You're going to be sprinting a lot of the time anyways. Uh, radar scanner, very good for finding the teleporter or straggling items or just anything else that randomly you need to find uh, that is very hard to find. Namely, the teleporter um, on freaking Sky Meadows. Um, I find myself picking this up if, I, if I'm struggling to find the teleporter. But usually that's not the case. Primordial cube, just fun to use. Um, oftentimes you're not going to need additional uh, uses of your abilities, so a lot of things that uh, give you like additional cooldowns or more of your ability are going to be lower down on the tier list except for the uh, backup mag. So this thing gives you more of your ultimate ability, this thing gives you more of your uh, all of your abilities but with a drawback. Uh, you're just not going to be needing to use your abilities the further you go into the run. Same with attack speed. It's just all about the uh, automatic um, explosion damage from everything else. The beads of fealty, uh, pretty decent, honestly. D for decent. Gets you more lunar coins. And then these two, uh, the old war stealth kit and the genesis loop, require you to get hit. You can. Pair that with your Hellfire Tincture, but there's just better Hellfire Tincture builds than anything that you could do to include these two items. No doubt, the Genesis Loop explosion is pretty hype, though. I acknowledge that. Only reason Leeching Seed is here because Railgunner exists. Um, Railgunner can't really get any usage out of the Harvester Scythe due to not getting a you know crit chance the way other survivors do. So if you want to have um, a one eighth as good Harvester Scythe, then Leeching Seed is the uh, way to go. Otherwise, um, I would recommend just getting a Transcendence on um, Railgunner specifically and calling it a day. Now for the most useless items in the game that I would never pick up, <coughs> reducing your cooldown. Uh, like I mentioned, you're not going to be using your abilities, you're not going to be using your attack speed for the most part. Um, stun Grenade... It, it just feels like you're uh, feeding white items to something that doesn't really do too much for you when you're one-shotting everything, so... Stun Grenade goes down here. Uh, fireworks, pretty good if you activate a teleporter and you have a lot of these, it'll just automatically start shooting down everything, but... Other than that, there's really no reason to get it. There just really isn't. There's other uh, better sources of automatic damage. Um, although maybe you could substitute some of the automatic damage options, but do you really want to rely on fireworks when um, a teleporter could st spawn underneath like a, a stage overhang somewhere, like on Abyssal Depths, like where the uh, legendary chest is? If the uh, teleporter spawns there and you activate your uh, bundle of fireworks, it's gonna just pop on the wall and not actually damage any enemies. Next, uh, Squid Polyp, it'll um, temporarily take up your uh, minion slots, which puts it higher than these items, interestingly. It'll only temporarily take up your uh, minion slots, and it is an automatic source of damage. It pairs kind of well with fireworks, so that's why they're together too. Mocha, Strictly speaking, a worse version of a uh, soldier syringe and a worse version of the uh, goat hoof. If the uh, mocha was in the game and the syringe and the goat hoof were taken out, I would put the mocha honestly probably in the god tier build because the way that it gives you movement speed to your base movement and to your sprint movement is honestly huge. But 
it's completely outclassed and it's uh, half as good as you know a god tier item and half as good as a C tier item so there's just no reason to get it. Um, War Banner increases your attack speed and movement speed when you're inside the banner. Um, there's just no reason to really get it. Um, Lapton Daisy, automatic source of healing. Pretty decent, but again, not reliable entirely because it, it's just tied to the teleporter event. Um, Infusion, Bison Steak, uh, these can be kind of situational. If you don't want to go too far on your um, shaped class, then you could start picking up these two items to get a little bit more tanky. But there's kind of no reason to really do it um, outside of maybe like a Hellfire Tincture build. These will come in kind of handy when you're stacking it specifically with uh, more shaped glass. Wake of the Vultures, completely useless. Uh, Interstellar Desk Plant causes a lot of lag. Corpse Bloom uh, basically debuffs all your healing. Um, Norris Tome Bandolier causes a lot of lag. Just a lot and a lot of lag. The um, boss items. Forget what it's called. Defensive Nucleus. The Beetle Guards, Halcyon Seed, and Happiest Mask. They take up your minion slots when you want to have, um, you know, Colonel Droneman and Empathy Cores instead of these guys. <laughs> Ooh, excuse me. These two, I'm not too sure. I haven't done a lot of testing with them. They might be good. I basically never picked them up, I'll be honest with you. The only time I've ever activated these was with a battle bottle of uh, chaos. Or just, you know, the first time that I played the game and it wasn't impressive. Uh, focus crystal, a uh, way better source of uh, damage increase is going to be your crowbar in every si situation. So there's just no reason to get the uh, focus crystal. Um, the horn, chances are if you're using an equipment to uh, fight a boss, and it one-shots the boss specifically, or you just have other amazing items, then, you know, attack speed is just not a priority, that's why it's down here again. Uh, so there's the possibility for getting to use this, and there's also the possibility of it just being useless overall. Brittle Crown, you basically don't need gold in um, Command Sacrifice Swarm. Stage 4. It has a niche, very, very niche use for getting the legendary chest. Uh, outside of that, completely useless. It'll hurt you more than it'll uh, help you. And you're going to get that legendary chest anyways if you have your mindset to it. There's gups on in the uh, in the game now, which uh, give you a lot of gold. So that makes, you know, just the enemy gup existing makes Brittle Crown completely useless. Uh, blasting Shower. By the time you remember to use it, if you're debuffed, you might already be dead. Um, unless you're specifically doing it to uh, refresh your bands. In that case, uh, there's better uh, other equipments that you could really be using instead of uh, getting your bands up and running. Like a prayer and accumulator. Leeching seed, awful, doesn't do like nearly as much healing as uh, as I would hope that it would do. It's not cool to use, it's not fun to use. Uh, the money shooter... Um, honestly, probably an okay-ish option for uh, range damage, but there's Royal Capacitor, so that uh, classes that instantly. 100% uh, crit chance. Um, crit chance isn't even optimized. Or, sorry, um, crit chance is not even... Um, considered in the uh, in the top items it's only an A tier uh, stat to get at this point in time so getting that is pretty pointless uh, you're nine times out of ten the uh, elephant is not gonna help you in the long run uh, volcanic egg awful worst equipment outside of the uh, recycler for or sorry uh, these two equipment items because it makes you move slow you still take damage over time uh, you don't heal 
the way that you would with uh, Strides of Heresy. It's just an overall terrible equipment to get. It's good for vertical mobility, but Milky Chrysalis. It's just an awful item. Uh, the key could honestly probably be moved up to D tier uh, because of the encrusted key being up here. Um, egocentrism converts all of your other items into itself over time. It's fun, but it's uh, not useful in command. Bottle of Chaos. Because the Volcanic Egg is in the rotation for Bottle of Chaos, it automatically makes it worse to get than the uh, Volcanic Egg. One, because you could randomly activate it, but two, because you probably aren't even going to get a uh, useful equipment activation most like half of the time. And it's a legendary. It's the worst legendary in the game. Uh, this thing uh, can potentially end, and end a run and take away all of your minions, all of your super helpful minions. This decreases your uh, attack speed and cooldowns by half. So it debuffs your uh, attack speed for your character. Although attack speed is not a priority, I feel like having attack speed is better than having cooldown reduction. So the trade-off that you get is not not favorable. Uh, this thing, it'll slow enemies, but it'll also slow you down when you're in it. Uh, so it's an awful uh, equipment to get. This thing doubles your health, but halves your movement speed. And you want to have all the movement speed that you can get. So this thing is just awful, honestly. And if you're going to get one shot, you're going to get one shot. And then the Benthic Bloom, while sure it upgrades everything to Legendary tier essentially, it also nerfs your character because all the uh, best movement items in the game are uh, not red, not red items. So that's a straight up nerf to your character in terms of movement speed, and I don't like that, so it's an F tier. Uh, recycler, you're never going to have to recycle any items. Uh, pe roll of Pennies can potentially soft block your game. Um, I know that there was a glitch where if you had a uh, Hellfire Tincture and uh, this thing, Ignition Tank, and you damaged a uh, ally in multiplayer, they would continue to take damage over time and uh, would continue to gain money. And so when you activate the teleporter event and uh, finish charging the teleporter and advance to the next stage, you'll constantly be gaining money. And the only way to uh, stop that is to kill your ally. Um, which is, you know, not ideal. The Glowing Meteorite. Trolliest item ever in the game. If, like, anybody picks it up, then you have the potential just to wipe your whole team just by pressing a button. It's funny. And then the rest of these, um, scraps you'll never pick up, pearls you'll never pick up, and these are all just useless, uh, equipment. Uh, equipment slots, like your... They're not even activatable. They're all passive. They could be just passive items, and then it would at least be above Wake of Vultures. <laughs> I'll say that much. Anyways, that is the the tier list. If you want to win, just get the starting items and the god tier build. You can ignore literally everything else in the game. <laughs>